Hello everyone. Welcome to Engineers Ireland and to the Junior Cert uh, Maths Grinds. We've had one introductory chat so far and we are mainly talking about what you should be doing, how you should study and just how you should view things. One of the main things that I want to put across to you is that mathematics even the level of mathematics you're learning for junior cert, its whole emphasis is to simplify things in your life, not complicate them. Now, like most things, mathematics stands on certain principles, certain assumptions. But even amongst the different sections of mathematics, you could say that math stands on two feet. And one is algebra, and the other one is geometry. And it's really when the two um, got joined back in the 1300s, you could really say that modern mathematics started. You may imagine that there's, for argument's sake, so many questions on the junior cert related to algebra, and sure can't I avoid them. I'll do the other sections. That would be one of the worst mistakes that you could make, because it is one of the two feet of mathematics you will find that solving problems in almost any of the other sections requires good understanding of algebra. So you master your algebra, you first off can answer its questions, and secondly you have made your other uh, sections much easier for yourself. You have been applying aspects of algebra for many, many years. All we're really doing in relation to stuff you might even have done in national school is we're giving names to things. And that's one of the most powerful things you can do in mathematics. If you don't know about something, if you don't know what it is, give it a name and now you can at least talk about it and you can manipulate it in a mathematical way. We can get an understanding of this by looking at a little problem. And the problem is the one I remember uh, coming across and being asked of me when I was about 11. And I believe it's one that you will often hear down around the countryside in this, in this country. I'm not too sure if you'd hear it around Dublin. But it involves this woman who has a basket of eggs. And she wants to leave her house, go into the village and uh, down to the market and sell her eggs. Anyway, on her way, She's just gone a little bit from her house and she meets somebody. And this person, now by the way, listen carefully to this story. This person buys half of her eggs plus half an egg. Then she continues on and about halfway to the town, she meets another person who buys half of the eggs that she has there plus half an egg. And then she continues further, and on the outskirts of the town she meets a third person who buys half of her eggs plus half an egg. And in the market itself, of the eggs she is remaining, a fourth person comes along and buys half of her eggs plus half an egg. And then she returns home, and when she comes home, she has one egg left over. Now. She managed to do all of these transactions without breaking an egg. How many eggs did she start with? Now that's the classic type of problem that you will find um, asked of young people. And it seems uh, too complicated. The reason I'm mentioning this story is I want you to learn the difference between two things between complicated and just big. This is not a complicated problem. It's not a difficult problem. It just has a number of steps in it. And one of the things that you learn from mathematics is to break something down. You break a problem into small problems, into um, little manageable things that you then solve individually. So then.
let's see what we would do as mathematicians on this. So we want to find out how many eggs she started with. And what we found was each time that she met somebody, that person, this, this and this, that the person bought half of her eggs plus half an egg. And the only fact that we have is that when she got home, she had one egg left. Now, even though the story starts up here, it's easier to solve it starting at the end of the story. We know she had one egg left. Now we're going to think in terms of what happened here. The person bought half of her eggs plus half an egg. Do you know how many eggs that was? And the answer is, we don't. So the first thing you do in maths is you give it a name. We can call it anything. We can call it N. We'd say there was N here. And we don't actually know what N was. And we know the person bought half of the eggs plus half an egg. So if the person took half the eggs, that's half N plus half an egg. And now you're saying, what did she finish up with? Her one egg. How much is it? Well, if this person took half the eggs plus half an egg, we know that she was left with half of her eggs minus half an egg. So half of n minus a half must be 1. See? It's 1 down here. She was left with half of her eggs minus an egg, or say minus half an egg. Now, we've got an equation. To make it easier, to look at, what we'll do is we'll multiply it by 2, so we get n minus 1 equals 2, so n equals 3. Now we know something. We know how many she had here. Now we can apply the exact same reasoning on this step here. We have finished with what we've done down here. And we're saying to ourselves, we want to find out how many eggs she had in her basket when she meets this person. And we can give it any name we like. You can call it Fred, for all I care. Now, in mathematics, we like to pick certain letters because they're short. And it's certainly easier to write something like N or M than it would be to call it Penelope, which takes a lot more letters to write. We're generally very efficient and effective in how we write things. We could, for argument's sake, say that she had m eggs here. And we don't know how many that is. What do we know? We know that this third person here actually bought half of the eggs and half an egg. What that means is that she was left with half of her eggs less half an egg. And that number is 3. When we multiply across by 2, what we will get is m 
minus 1 equals 6. That's very simple. So now we know this. And at this stage, it should be very easy for you to work out the remaining numbers. We know that there's 1 down here. 3 is twice 1 plus 1. 7 is twice 3 plus 1. So this should be 15, and this should be 31 she started with. So when she left her house, she had 31 eggs. Because when she started, and when she met this first person, she had all the eggs in the basket. So she left the house with 31. And what you will notice is half of 31, well, it would break an egg if the person only bought half because you would have had 15 and a half eggs. That's why they bought half the eggs plus half an egg. So this person took 16. That left this 15. Half of those would be seven and a half. So the person bought half them plus half an egg, bought eight, and so on. What are the lessons we can learn here? The mathematics here you could have done in national school. That's the first lesson and it's very important because the problem put to us was a fairly long problem but broken into simple little steps you find that the mathematics that you actually use to solve a problem is normally way below the level of maths that you're learning at the time. And what you will find in your junior cert is that while you're learning something new, it may be, for example, trigonometry, the maths that you're applying, the toolbox of mathematics that you're applying, is normally very, very simple stuff. Okay. In algebra, there aren't too many complexities. All there is is a need to understand the basics. Now the book I'm using is one of the standard books and certainly for junior cert the regular or the usually used books are very good, they're clear and they certainly explain lots of basic things to you. And this one basically is starting off and talking about just basic algebra, what do you know? Now, I'm not going to insult you guys by explaining to you that when you have three outside of a bracket with a number of terms inside, in simplifying, you multiply the three through. They're all obvious things, okay? But there are a few things that you really do need to understand. When you're given something, for argument's sake, and you're asked to simplify that, you need to know that this is not an equation. Okay? It's not an equation because nothing is equated to something. For our argument's sake, if we were given, let's say, this equal to anything over here, that's an equation because this is the thing that matters. This says that equates to this, equates or equals this. That's an equation. So to begin with, there's no equation. So all you can do here is simplify. You will never be able to find out what x is because you haven't been told that this equals something else. Now, the rules of multiplying are very easy. This 2x will have to multiply into this one and this one, and you'll notice I'm including the, the minus in it. 
and it'll have to multiply into this. After that, and I'm including the minus here, the minus 4 will have to multiply into the x squared, it'll have to multiply into this, and then it'll have to multiply into that. So we expect to get six numbers out of this particular thing. <coughs> And let's just go through it, because it's one or two little things that if you understand it here, it'll become easier when you're doing long division and stuff like that. So 2x by the x squared. Now we're looking at 2x by the minus 3x. We're actually going to do three separate little things to make this simpler. When we talk about 2x, it's understood that it's a plus 2x, okay? But especially once any of your terms has a minus, has a negative in it, once that happens, you're always best in your multiplication or whatever you're doing, division, you are best to deal with your signs first. Minus by plus is basically what we're dealing with here. And that's going to tell us this much. Having uh, written that down, we now don't need to worry about signs anymore. We now concentrate on something else. We do have a number part here, and we have a number part here. So you do that secondly. And then you've got your variable bit. Okay. And then we move on to the next one. So you can see there's three bits. Now, in this case, they're both pluses, so we're happy enough. You put down your plus, and you have number parts, and that gives us that much. Now, along with that, we're going to have these guys multiplied by this guy. And we have a minus out front, so we need to be careful. Minus by plus will give me a minus. 4 by 1, because don't forget x squared is 1x squared. And we'll get this. Now, that minus multiplied by that minus, minus by minus is plus. And 4 by 3 is 12. And we get an x minus by plus, minus, and 5 fours are 20. So what we're basically saying is even something that you've been doing for quite a length of time, which is, for argument's sake, 2x by minus 3x, is really three little bits. And if you deal with them individually, don't try and play around with these things in your head and cough out um, a guess on things. Break it into its little bits like the problem with the eggs we had um, earlier. When we multiply plus 2x by minus 3x, we need to do three separate things, not jumble them all together and think of them as just doing one thing. You deal with the signs, you deal with the numbers, you deal with the variables. OK, for example. Deal with the signs. What are they? Minus by minus gives us a plus. Deal with the numbers. 5, 2s are 10. Deal with the variables. x cubed and an x gives you x to the power of 4 and the y squared. Everything in mathematics becomes easy if we break it into the simple little bits. The reason I've gone to the trouble on this is not because I believe you guys have trouble in this area of things, but I think a lot of people do have trouble when they're doing long division. And the example given in this particular book here will actually serve to explain certain things to us.
first lesson, and it's really an important one. You will have seen, when you're given the problem, that we want to divide 2x minus 3 into 2x cubed plus x squared minus 8x plus 3. The mistake people make, the first mistake to make, is they will have written this really tight together. Like that. That's what they would have written on this line. Lots of people will do that. That's not the thing to do because you're giving yourself no room. And you want to give yourself room. So you'll notice I have a lot of room in here, here, and here. Because then it's very easy to see the different columns. And it's also easy when we get bigger numbers. You could finish up with a 16x squared going in the place. And you want to give yourself space. So that's the first thing. Free, putting in space into a problem like this makes it easier to convert this problem into a series of smaller problems. Now, we generally do long division by considering the term that will be on the left. That's the one we normally play with, but it doesn't have to be that one. And we'll say 2x. What factor multiplying into 2x will give us 2x cubed? And we'd say x squared will do that for us because 2x by x squared is 2x cubed. Now, and we know that's a plus guy. Now we've got to multiply this guy also by the x squared. Minus by plus is a minus. Let me just clear these lines out of here for the moment case to confuse you. So we've got the minus out of the way. And the 3 by 1 is just a 3. And then we've got x squared. And we're already down at the point where I want to explain um, that lots of people, and by the way, not only in junior cert, even at leaving cert, Lots of people make a mistake here, or they actually do a little trick, but that trick always slows you down. Right, there's two bits here. This is pretty obvious. These terms are similar because they're x cubed terms, and they're exactly the same size, so we get zero out of that. Now, the important one is the one coming up. What we have is a plus x squared, and we want to take away a minus 3 x squared. How we speak this in language terms in our mind is what really makes it easy or difficult. So listen carefully. It's x squared minus, because we want to be taken away, x squared minus minus 3 x squared. Now minus minus, as you found out before in the multiplications, minus by minus is a plus. So x squared minus minus 3 x squared is x squared plus 3 x squared. And x squared plus 3 x squared is plus 4 x squared. In your junior cert, if you've got long division, not just in an algebra question, but other, uh, and any one of several other sections. That's how they're trying to catch you. They're trying to give you this line here with a negative in it. And you'll find time and time again this comes up. And the reason it does is lots of people get it wrong. Now what, so, what some schools teach people is on this line you swap all of the signs and then you add it to the line up here. That's fine. But it's a trick that does work, but it'll keep you slow. It's much better to speak it correctly in language terms in your mind, such as we did over here. And what we were talking about was x squared minus minus 3x squared. And minus minus is plus. So it's x squared plus 3x squared. Yes? Now then, having done that, the job is to bring this guy down. And we get minus 8x. 
And now we're going to repeat the pattern that we have in the first line. We look at this first one. What factor does 2x have to be multiplied by to give us 4x squared? The signs are the same. There's a plus here, there's a plus here. So we're happy that it's a plus, and we'll get 2 has to get multiplied by 2 to give us a 4, and we need an x. So then, that's multiplying the 2x into both of these now, and plus by minus is a minus, 3 2s are 6, and you're left with an x. And when we come down here, this gives us nothing. And notice we have the exact same problem down here, but if we apply our language correctly, this isn't an issue. We have minus 8x's. And we need to be able to speak about what's going to happen here. And what it is, is it's minus 8x minus minus 6x. So it's minus 8x plus 6x, because minus minus is plus. Minus 8x plus 6x. And now this gets pulled down here. And we have a simple problem. What does 2x have to get multiplied by to give us minus 2x? And when we deal with that, is this correct? These two are identical, so you get a nothing here. And 3 minus a 3 is a 0 also. Now then. The next thing you need to understand is there's no remainder here at all. It's all zero. What that means is that this long equation here can be replaced. We can say that 2x cubed plus x squared minus 8x plus 3. We can say that that is exactly the same is 2x minus 3 by x squared plus 2x minus 1. They're the same. And we're able to say this is a linear or simple factor of this cubic equation here. And because this thing is to the power of 2, that's a quadratic factor of it. In algebra, you guys will be dealing with factors and finding factors of things. They're actually easy to do, and especially when you understand a few little rules about them. You guys are given a very useful little tool in this chapter, and what it is is the difference of two squares and what the factors are immediately. Let's say, for argument's sake, the two squares are x squared minus y squared. And we're saying, hmm, what factors cause that? Now, that's a very useful rule, and you should know this you should absolutely memorize this. And along with memorizing it, you'd be able to recognize it in, ma in many forms that it can um, occur in. Now, if you multiply these out yourself, you will find that this is the answer here. And we'll say, how does that help us? Well, for example, when you're presented with something like this, what you can notice is that's clearly a square, that's a square, that's a square, and that's a square. You don't have to you don't have to work it out because you know the game. This is how it works. You will say, 
Hmm. 2x minus 3y by 2x plus 3y. Easy. It's nice if you know little basics like this because in an exam when you see something like this guy you can write its answer immediately. For example here <clears throat> the trick is to see things. Now the example on page 24, example 27, is a nice little one because you do have a job and your job is to see what's there. Because unless you see what's there, you can't apply the tools that you know, the little tricks that you know. And the example 27 is 5x squared minus 5y squared. And you're asked to factorise this. Now then, what do you see? Because to make your life easy, you want to know what's there, separate out the different things, and then go and deal with them. First thing you have to notice here is there is a common factor. Okay? So we can say that's the same as 5 outside of. And now Now the nice thing for me here is I didn't really do any thinking here other than I looked, so the two basic things, one, there's a common factor which I then pulled out, and now over here, that's a square minus another square, and out pops the answer. This little trick here comes up in many, many sections. You notice how we're dealing with x's and y's here? What is x and what is y? Well, I don't know. Other than to say to you their names for things that I don't know. And they just happen to be the easy, simple names that we like to use in maths. But, for example, and I'm not trying to scare you or anything with this, but let's have a look at this. Um, What about that? Now, obviously, I'm using trigonometric terms here, causes and signs, but they are names too. Just to make my life easy for myself, either in my mind, or I could actually go and write it. For example, in your answer um, book for your um, in your exam, you're always allowed to write stuff over on the right hand side. You draw a vertical line, maybe 40% in. And you can say, this equation that I have over here, I'm going to look at it and play with it over here. And the reason you want to play with it over there is you don't want to be messing your answer all the way down along here and finishing up spending three pages in a long, squiggly set of lines that make very little sense to you down the left-hand side. You do all the playing around over in the right-hand side, and when you think you've got something, you put it back in the left-hand side. I could name this the same way as I could name this. And we may not need to, but I'm giving you a simple enough example to explain the principle here. I could call cos theta by a different name. Very simple one. I could call it x. So I now have 16. And don't forget it's a cos theta squared. So I have 16x squared. I just need to change one little thing here while I was thinking of something else. actually made my life a little bit more complicated. Anyway, now we'll proceed. And we're saying, hmm, minus 25, and I could call sine theta y. And it's a sine theta squared, so it's y squared. And now, 
what I'm looking at over here, it's exactly the same as over here, but it's in more familiar terms because we like using costs, we like using x's and y's. And I can immediately go and say, hmm, 16 is 4 squared. So it's 4x minus 5y by 4x plus 5y. You see, having worked it out here, I can come straight back to this side and say, hmm, this thing here then is 4 cos theta minus 5 sine theta. OK. What we've done is play the game. And the game is rename. And you rename to keep things either to keep things simple or to bring you into something familiar. You will find that this same game gets played several different ways. Just looking for a suitable example in here. Sometimes you're given something relatively easy. Easy to comprehend means it looks similar to something you've seen before. You could be told this quadratic equation. It's quadratic because it's an x squared, okay? And you're asked to factorize it. And you'd say, okay, I can do that. But Instead of that, you might have been given this. And you could have been told to factorize that. Your first job when you're given a problem is to look and see what's there. Now, you could look at this equation here and say that it's very complicated. No, it's not. There's just one extra little step in it. And what you're supposed to do here is you're supposed to look at this equation and see, does it look like something that I know that's simpler than it? And clearly, what we can see is there's a term here, this y minus 3 term, that's being squared. And interestingly enough, it's over here being multiplied by 12. And you and I are now in a position if we have to say, I could name that y. I could name it anything. I could name it a p or anything. But for convenience sake, we could call it x. And you can come over here to your right hand side and say, well, let x equal to y minus 3. I haven't done that. We can then say, ah, I now have x squared plus 12x plus 27. And now I can go and I can solve it. I can find out what the factors are. There are a number of things that actually make it easier for us to work out what factors are. Let's pick a general case. Let's say our factors are simple. A now is standing for any number, and B is standing for a different number. And A or B could be negative, but we're just leaving them as positive to begin with. And we'll say these are two factors. They're two linear factors, and when I multiply them together, I will get a quadratic equation. So let's see what the quadratic equation looks like. The rules are first by first, first by second, second by first, second by second. So what we will, will we get? x squared. That's the first by first. And we'll get a bx. 
Now we'll get an AX and we'll get an AB. And it's better to write it this way. How many X's do we have? Now you'll notice, even though I have the B written first here and the A written second, I've written it A plus B. It's, um, it's not just that it's traditional to do this, but if you have a system and you always apply the system, it generally will make something, uh, it'll simplify things down. We like to follow a pattern, A before B. It makes a lot more sense. If we always write it that way, we will never get confused. Okay. Now, the interesting thing that you can see here, the number here, forget the signs at the moment now, just look at the number here. That number is the product of this number and that number. That's handy. And this one is their sum. It's A plus B. So, <clears throat> how will that work? We'll pick a simple example. Now notice we're still sticking to all pluses at the moment. We can say, we'll use this one. And we want to factorize it. Now generally, for the junior cert, the factors you'll have are whole numbers. And notice we're only dealing at the moment with a case where it's a single one here. It's not like 3x squared or anything like that. It's a single one. And when you've got just that x squared one, we know we're in this territory where there's a single x here and a single x here. Okay. What do we know? This six number, that's the a by b. The two numbers are going to be when multiplied together will give you the 6. And of whole numbers, you're saying to yourself, what is it? Well, you could have 1, 6. You can have 2, 3. Now you could also say 3, 2 and 6, 1. But we leave it at this. What do we know? What else do we know? We know from here that 5 is the product, sorry, is the sum. Add these two together, you get 7. Add these two together, you get 5. So it's these two. OK. Now then, what about signs? Well, we should be able to work this out pretty easy. We could go and play this little game again. For example, we could say, and do it this way, we'll give a negative and a positive. You can play through all of the options. But fundamentally, what we'll know or want to see is this guy. If I have a negative here, minus a by a plus b, I know I'm going to get minus AB. That's the exact same thing I'd get if I had, let's see, I will have now, how about the third one, where they're both negative? And we go minus A by minus b equals plus a b. Right. That tells us a lot. It's saying to us that when we're given a quadratic equation and we're asked to find its factors, even before you look at the number here, you look at its sign. This sign, being a plus, tells me one of two things. It tells me either I have a plus A and a plus B, 
or I have a minus a and a minus b. So both of the numbers in the factors will either be positive or negative. Now, if they're both positive, then this must be a plus. And because it's a plus 5, we're saying, yes, they're both positive. On the other hand, if the equation we had was Let's play the game again. This is a plus. So the two numbers are either positive or they're negative. When we add them together, we got this, minus 5. That's telling us they're both negative. So we would expect that as a result. If this isn't really clear at the moment, I'm just saying to you, you yourself take a little bit of time and play through these options and to see where these negatives and positives come from. For example, and I'm deliberately sticking with the same kind of numbers, let's look at x squared. same kind of numbers. That means one of the factors has a positive number and the other one has a negative number. Okay? We also know that the two multiplied together will give me a 6. So I'm looking at a 1, 6, or a 2, 3. Now, at this stage, you can actually go a little further on it. You can say, this could be a negative 1 that makes it a plus 6 because see over here it's telling us it's minus this could be the negative 2 and this could be the plus 3 now we could also have negative 3 plus 2 because they'll multiply and give you the same answer sorry this is a minus 6 here or it could be this plus 1 minus 6 is 1 is the two numbers multiplying together. Remember that? So let's multiply these two. That gives me minus 6. Minus 6. Minus 6. And that gives me minus 6. Yeah? So all of those are possibilities based on this minus 6. Now, we know when the two numbers have been added together, we've got plus 1. Because plus x is plus 1x. So let's add them together. Minus 1 and 6 is plus 5. Minus 2 and 3 is plus 1. Minus 3 and 2 is minus 1. Minus 6 and 1 minus 5. It's this one. So we know the numbers. So again, in the same way, if we were, as, uh, as I've mentioned, multiplying two little factors together, such as um, 3xy by minus 4x, you multiply the signs together first and deal with that. Then you multiply the numbers together and you deal with that. Then you multiply your variables together and you deal with that bit. Here, we're saying when you're faced with a quadratic and you're asked to find factors for it, you start off by looking at the signs. This one will tell you if both numbers are positive or negative, or if one is positive and the other is negative. This sign here solves, gives you more information. Because if I had a plus 6 there, at the end, I'd be saying they're either both positive or negative, and because this one is positive, I'd be saying, yes, they're all positive. So you've cut down your options. You're only looking at one simple option, both positives. So you just look at the signs and let the signs tell you, and that then greatly reduces the amount of work you have to do. Okay, And I always find it useful 
to start doing this. Now, by the way, notice how when I came down to here, I found my plus one. I normally wouldn't bother doing any of this because I didn't need to do it, okay? This isn't hard stuff. It's actually very, very easy if you open your eyes and just look and see what's there and ask simple questions. Now, there is one little thing um, I want to show you in relation to this, which you probably won't come across until you maybe get to your leave insert, but just in case it might come up in the exam. Now, I know you guys understand what the square roots are of things. For example, we could say, what's the square root of 4? It's some number multiplied by itself that gives us 4. Now you could say, ah, that's 2, because 2 by 2 equals 4. But it could also be minus 2, because minus 2 by minus 2 equals 4. That's the first thing, OK? You'd be able to say a square root of 4 equals plus or minus 2. We do know that, don't we? Now, in general, when we are dealing with factors and stuff like that, we will only generally look at the positive root. We're fortunate in the example we've picked here of 4, looking for the square root of 4, because it's a nice easy number. If we were looking at the square root of 5, or the square root of 3, for example, and many, many more, it won't be that easy. We will find that it's much easier to leave it looking like this than to try and put in its number value. Now, why should this link in, or why am I saying this links in? Let's get back to our difference of squares, and we'll say, for argument's sake, um, and we can immediately go and split that up. Okay, that's all pretty obvious stuff, isn't it? Now, this is the one that I want you to see. What about this? And we'll even leave it nice and simple for you. What can you do about that guy? Well, that's the exact same kind of problem. Once we recognize that 7 is its square root multiplied by itself. True. So once I see that, if I saw this thing here, without really doing much mathematics, I would just say, haha, I know this thing here. It may look a little weird to you, but root 7 is just as valid a number as 5 or 7 or 9 or anything else. What I want you to learn from this is any number, whatever it is, in this case 7, it's also the square of its square root. 4 equals 2 squared, which is root 4 squared any number, you can replace it by the square of its square root. 7 is the square see, of its square root. This guy here is likely to be harder than what you will find. So that's good news. Now, In, in factors, we will obviously find expressions which won't have a simple just x squared at the start or whatever. For example, the 
this thing here means that you can't get an answer that'll be like x plus something by x. We'll just say plus something or minus. It won't be a simple 1, 1, because there is an 8 here. Okay? Now, how would you deal with that? Well, you can look at it on a general level. You'd say to yourself, hmm, let's just go CX plus A. And I can multiply those out. Okay? What do I know about these now? I'll get C, D, X squared plus other bits. All the rest of the stuff is pretty much what we were talking about. But what we're finding now is that this guy here is the product of that and that. In the same way as what we were looking at right at the very end. Okay, And even if we multiply this out, we will finish up with, in our last term, it's going to be A, B. So 3 is an AB. It's a minus 3. One must be negative and the other positive because of this minus. Okay? And over here we're looking at factors of 8. So you have things such as 1, 8, 2, 4. Here are the possibilities over here. And this guy, because it's a negative one, it could be minus 1, 3, or it could be minus 3 plus 1. And they're the two sets you play with. And you're playing with them to find this guy in the middle. It just takes a little bit of time, but it's easy. Okay. In the first chat, the introduction, I was mentioning to you that there is a step that most people don't see. And the step is the difference between understanding something and knowing something. We're dealing with quadratics and we're dealing with finding factors. This stuff will come up all over the place. It can come up literally trigonometry. In the leaving search you'll get it coming up in so many different sections. One of the real keys for making your other sections easy is to absolutely master this area of things. It's not surprising then that there are perhaps 150 or so examples in this book in a matter of a small number of pages on factorizing. You could say, oh, yeah, I understand that. Fine, and that's true. But I'm telling you, understanding it is not the same as knowing it. Knowing it is a very confident thing where your mind remains very simple. Yeah, I know that. And you can just deal with it straight in the same way as when I was dealing with 4x squared plus 9y, sorry, minus 9y squared. I could immediately say it's 2x minus 3y by 2x plus 3y because I know the little rule on the difference of two squares. And I know what it looks like in many places. For you guys, this thing, the getting factors of quadratics, is an essential skill. It will appear all over the place, including your exam, and it will continue to appear through the Leaving Cert and if you go to college afterwards, it's always turning up. Master this. Every example you can find on this, do sit down, do work it out, because it will pay you back. It will pay you back because you'll become much faster and much more effective. You may understand it. Your job is to go and master it, okay? These examples are here to make it much easier for you in your exam. Work these examples. Okay?
Okay. Another little basic skill. And we will just pick again a straightforward example. Well, we'll probably pick more than one. Uh, from the examples in this book. We're asked to go and express as a single fraction. And you're looking at it and you're thinking, whoa, hey, there's X's in here. There are lots of different terms in here. Well, whenever you're dealing with any level in mathematics, you should be able to think back and appeal to something much simpler that looks a lot like it that you dealt with a long, long time ago. And you can do it by way of a related example, something that looks like it but is much simpler. Now, let's say for argument's sake, um, we just say, back in national school, we were very good at doing this. And we will just, for argument's sake, do it like that. Now that looks quite similar because you've got a fraction here minus this fraction here and I've got a fraction here minus this fraction here. Now we're picking a simple example that's well inside our ability. Why are we doing this? We're going to use this simple one to keep our mind clear and know exactly what we're doing. This is how we would have done it in national school. You'd have said okay find a common denominator for the two fractions and you're looking for the smallest multiple of these two and two by three was six and you're saying now I'm going to cross multiply these guys and I'll get five threes are fifteen and I'm going to take away seven twos fourteen okay so I'll get one over six if we have come over here to the right hand side and we've set up our simple problem like this we haven't set it up to answer the simple problem. That's not the issue. If we do that, we've just made ourselves feel good by answering a simple problem well inside our ability that we weren't asked to answer. Okay? That's not the objective. And it's really important that you understand this because you will notice over the next, whatever it is, several weeks, that I will be going across to the right hand side picking a simple example, something that look a bit like what's on the left hand side, and I'm doing it for a reason. I'm setting up a simple map. So, haven't set up our related little problem. Let's see why we've it done. We're going to now think on a simpler little level than just solve the problem. We could say, oh, common denominator is going to be 6. Well, what is the common denominator here? It's actually 2 by 3. It's very important to write it as 2 by 3, not 6. And so what did we do then? By having 6 down here, we will now be cross-multiplying. So let's just do that. And we'll also be taking away because that's a minus, notice, the same as this one. That's why I put a minus over here. We'll be taking away this one. And you say, what has been taken away? 2 by 7. That's all we need this thing over here for. We wanted to set up a map to know where each of the bits come from. And with that map, we can come over here and say, now we do have 2 by 3 will give us a 6 here. That's fine. And now we're saying, I want 5x minus 3. I want that multiplied by 3, just like this. And I want to take away 2x plus 1 multiplied by 2, just like I did here. The thing on top got multiplied by a 2, and that's what I'm doing here. So this may look complicated. The real issue is, it's no different to what you were doing when you were in national school. Now, having done this, all we have to do is simplify.
and that's not difficult. The second type of problem in these is where the x or y bits are going to be underneath the line. And again, if you want to, and by the way, you don't have to do this all the time, just sometimes if your mind isn't clear and you're saying, my goodness, that looks complicated, you give yourself an easy problem. And you can do it in many ways. The only important thing is to hold the same sign in here, whether it's a, a subtract or an add. And this time, we'll just do it in the general case. It's something divided by something minus another thing divided by a fourth thing. And we'll say, what do we get out of that? Well, it's B, D, that's those two multiplying into each other. And then we'll have the cross multiplying, these guys. And we'll get A, D minus B, C. This is our map to allow us to deal with this. Now, notice the problems we have over here on the left-hand side. It's a simple 5 up top, and it's a simple 3 up top on the second expression. It could be expressions with x's and y's, but the exact same principle of this will apply to it. And having seen this over here, we use it as our map, our guide as to what we're going to do. And we'll say, right. And we do our cross multiply. And we know that we have a minus, and we'll get 3 outside of, OK? Now, there's just one thing, not so much to watch out for, but it's very easy to come along now and to get very messy going down along here, because there's a whole load of things to be multiplied out. You can get messy very fast. And whenever you get messy, you seriously increase the risk of two things. One, of making a mistake. And that's going to lose you a lot of marks. And the other is that by being messy, um, you can just lose marks because you're not clear and you're not communicating well to the examiner. And after all, your exam book, what you hand back, that's a communication document. It's what you're wanting an examiner to look at, and you're hoping to get good marks. So you want to keep your answers clean. And one way of doing that is you bring things over to the right hand side and you play. And even if things don't work out over there, so what? You try something new and eventually you find it, and then you bring it across to the left. So the top half of this isn't too bad. We can multiply it out. 5 twos are 10x, and we get 25 and now watch out for the minuses. And by the way, again, they love to do this. They love to give you a minus out here and have a minus inside here. So remember, deal with your signs first. There's a minus 3 here and there's a plus 3 here. Minus by plus is minus. And three threes are 9 and we get an x. Now, you have a minus out here and you have a minus here. Two minuses. Minus by minus gives plus and you get 4 threes or 12. So that's handy. What we have above the line, easily simplified down. It's the bit below the line. We could start to multiply it out here, but it would be cleaner to do it over here. And now you do all your multiplying out here. And you could pull it across at this stage, but you can also do your simplifying while you're at it. Over here, sorry, this is a 6. And having done that, you bring it back.
okay? Well, one more step simplifies this down. But what you will notice is you've started there. This is the key line, because this is the one that works off the map. And now all we're doing here is simplifying. And in the over on the right hand side, we've just moved things over that keeps everything clean in our answer running down on the left. Okay. One little issue in relation to this is that sometimes you're wise not to multiply this out. And the reason for it is you might have two or three terms, like this is one term here, here's another one. You might have two or three terms and you're told to add or subtract these terms. And what you can find is that the answer that you get up top here can actually be just some factor of one of the, or sorry, some uh, multiple of one of the factors. For example, we could have finished up this won't be the case, but I'm just showing you this is the type of thing that can happen. You could have finished up with, and that implies that we will get um, 4x plus 10 over. And let's say we hadn't bothered multiplying this line out, so we still have it as it is. Okay. Now, what are we supposed to notice? We're supposed to notice that there is a common factor up here, a little 2. So that line that's equal to 2 outside of and the great news is this guy cancels that guy and you'll be left with 2 all over 3x minus 4. I know it's got a little sloppy down at the bottom there, but you understand. I'm saying to you, this guy down here sometimes is best left in its factor form because we find, having simplified the top line, you can find, in many cases, a situation where there will be a common factor that you can divide. And if you have left it like this to the end before you actually multiply out the bottom one, it means that you've saved yourself time and a little bit of hassle. And remember, in the exam, there are two aspects. One is what you know, and the other is how fast you can do it, because time is important. And the how fast you can do it depends on how well you've changed what you understand into what you know, because what you know you can do quickly. Well, I leave it at this. Um, I was intending our, to move straight into linear um, simultaneous equations and to then deal with inequalities, but we can deal with that in the next one. What I'm hoping you will notice is that there are a number of basic little things that makes life easy for us. One of them is keep in our mind at all times that mathematics is actually simple and what it actually does is make problems that would otherwise be complicated simple and it does that by breaking them down into little problems that's why we had the basket of eggs problem the other is how important the right hand side of your answer book is this is where you play simpler games than what's actually happening over on the left hand side and you play them to come up with maps things that tell you the pattern that you will then go and apply in the left hand side and because you're only following a pattern over here you're not worried about getting number wrong numbers wrong or anything we're just pulling them down from this top line putting them into this line to get our pattern right i haven't got our pattern right down here then haven't got the pattern right, now you simplify. Every little step 
is clear and independent. That means you're much more likely to preserve all of your marks. It would be a terrible thing to find, having worked very hard, that you sit into your exam, not just your maths exam, this applies to any other exam, that you sit into them and you waste your marks. And the easiest way to waste marks is to clutter things. I know this screen is cluttered. It's cluttered because I don't want to have to empty the screen many times and finish up with only little bits here. But your copybook should be neat. And one of the things that will keep it neat is this division here. Simplify over on the right hand side and pull it back to the left hand side. Because your answer runs down the left. Set up patterns for yourself like we've done here. Understand basic rules, rules that will hold to you for many years. The difference of two squares is a little golden key that opens many things for you. Understanding what the signs of terms in a quadratic equation tell you about the factors of the quadratic. If you understand that, you will save yourself working out a whole lot of, a whole lot of other factor combinations you will hone in on the ones. If the free number is a plus, you know they're either the factors are either both plus numbers or negative numbers. You look to the sign in front of the x term to make that decision. Are the negatives, are the positives, etc. They are systematic, simple things to do that gets rid of complexity in a job. I would hope over the next few weeks that in applying those basic little rules, you will start to see that, yes, you're getting to understand it a bit clearer, and things that were or seemed to be more complicated are now just a whole set of simple little things. Mathematics is designed to clear away lots of things that are confusing. It's designed to simplify and while you're learning your mathematics, as you are for your junior cert, it's designed to train your mind. And you might say, training, what training? The training is look and see. And when you see what's there and you recognize it to be similar to something you know already, the next thing is understanding simple procedures. Break it into little steps. When you practice that long enough, your mind will become much clearer and much better trained and you will become fast. And hopefully that will happen long before you get to your junior cert exam. Okay, next day we will get on to simultaneous equations and inequalities and a few other little bits and pieces. See you the next day.